Welcome back, everybody, to the podcast. Still unnamed, but don't worry, we'll deal with that later. I would like to first uh, address our beloved audience by reading out the memo that was sent out by... Let's see, who was this sent out by? It was Neil, wasn't it? Um, Let's see. It actually was Neil. It's Neil from Accounting. <sighs> I knew it. And it says, uh, please... Whoever put the mummified corpse in the fridge, would you please remove it? It is sitting upon my cake. Uh, signed, Neil. Which, I mean, just freaking, that's such Neil. What a Neil thing <laughs> it, to it, do. it is. And of course, Neils are always found in accounting departments as well. Listen, I, I, I don't know. He's going to have to just deal with, like, I feel bad. I feel bad for my, my corpse. Got cake all over it. Did you put that in there? I'm not going to say no. I am joined today by Avery. Say hello, Avery. Hello, Avery. And uh, remind me again, which department in this building you're from? I am also from the PR department. Oh, um, okay. But it's not exactly the same PR department. Uh, so she, your, your friend, she's from the public relations one right yes yes so i'm part i'm from the pr department which stands for personal record department personal uh, records so department as yes as i'm I'm like the kind of like the mascot for the company so like I'm, I'm like doing all this athletic stuff oh and so like so they they constantly having me having have me going for personal records so that's it's, that's it's, right you know how normally they do like sky writing and you see a plane with like a long banner streaming behind it? Weren't you the one they put? One I of was those... the, I was, no, I was the banner. Oh, 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 I, <laughs> okay. Okay. Cause I could have sworn that I saw there was like a news story about some accident that happened downtown where one of the marathon runners was, had one of those long streamers on his back and it was the name mm. of our company. And he caused a major pileup, like like what happened at the Tour de France, kind of. Uh, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> I swear, everybody who comes on the show is just gonna say they're from the PR department, but change which what what P and R both mean. I mean, each time we only have we only have so many departments. I mean, uh, this building, as far as we can tell, just goes on forever, and I can't seem to find an exit. By the way, if you do find an exit, I would very much like to find an exit. So don't don't tell upper management. But I mean, I I'm just chilling with my my buddy in the in the fridge. <laughs> okay, what's 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 his name, by the way? uh I, you know i i didn't ask um <laughs> i don't think he would have gotten an answer but well well we, we were involved we were both involved at the at the marathon oh okay you see um and one of us came back in much better shape but <laughs> I, of... I, he, he's 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 a little quiet but i think he's from the absent department Oh, the absent department. So that's what this is, right? So this- I think so. We're recording in, I, I'm not sure why our company has, I guess it's sort of like an in-house store. So that way the employees don't have to leave. And mm. there's no one here, big surprise. Um, why leave work when you have all the luxuries? But it of... is fully stocked, which is kind of cool. Yes, there, but there's no one here. Yeah. Which actually, that's actually fascinating that you bring that up because I do want to bounce this question. This is a question that I honestly would just want to keep asking more people because I find okay. it infinitely fascinating and I think it tells you a lot about a person. If there was a location or a place where if you had your druthers, you could just have it all to yourself and maybe a small group of friends, but literally no one else was there, my answer was Kosai. If I could get the entirety of Kosai completely dead empty, but all the lights and all the equipment still making noise and still on, mm -hmm. but no one else there. I just think that would be the freaking coolest I love, thing. I love that feeling. Like, and this might take me a while to think about just, but, but like, with it, it, the sort of like why I, how I love going around, like I like to go for runs or walks like at night because you have this like, <laughs> jokingly absence of just like this lack of people and you have this whole space that you're used to seeing filled but it's empty but then sometimes you'll still see things you'll still see things functioning or 
you'll see someone around every now and then maybe someone maybe like a cop drive by or something yeah and it's it's got that like tone to it that i love so coast high is a really good point really good one for that so wh while you're thinking of that and i that is a difficult question to answer on the spot it's not like oh you're number one just necessarily a cool place it doesn't have to be mm. your number one you can keep thinking about that but that reminds me tell me about zanesville that uh concrete plant you went to Oh yeah. So, uh, for a little bit of backstory for this. So when I was in high school, I went to a career center and my friends and I did this video production competition thing. And there were, we knew a few students from a couple classes above us, uh, who had previously graduated and they're like, okay, like we, we need a, we need some spaces to shoot. Um, and so we, uh, we ended up like consulting them and they're like, okay, so we found this really cool abandoned cement factory in Zanesville that is basically like completely abandoned. It's massive. It's this huge complex. Um, and so we ended up going to shoot one of our projects there and it was really cool. Um, I've seen, I actually found there's a, there's a website that basically like catalogs old abandoned places all over the country. Um, and they have a bunch of pictures of this place from like 10 years ago. Um, but here now, everything is covered in like greenery. There are trees growing on top of the building. It's super, super cool. Um, and so it's like that sort of, again, that sort of like just empty space that you can explore to your heart's content. It's super cool. And based on the photos, like if you look up like photos of the place, the crazy part is, is that it looks like everyone just sort of got up and left one day. Like it doesn't. You look... could still see a bunch of stuff. Like, granted, a lot of it, like a lot of it's dilapidated and right. collapsed, and things are broken. But you can find like gloves and equipment. There's a whole like basement section, which is terrifying, by the <laughs> way. Well, that's that's uh, the crazy part to me is that it didn't seem like a slow decline. It looks like everyone just got up from their desks one day and walked mm -hmm. out because there are just desks and books overturned. Like, that's so cool to me. And I don't know mm -hmm. why. It is cool. Um, going back to that question, it's hard. I'm it is. Think there are so many places I feel like the, it matches the criteria for. Any sort of like place that's normally like you would normally have to be guided through comes to mind, like something like a museum or an Ooh. exhibit, just having that sort of like being able to explore everything and hearing like the machines and stuff. Dude. Um, a just, power plant actually a power plant comes to mind a power plant mm -hmm. that, just like or like or like a water treatment plant like just any any of those big places with a bunch of machinery really always intrigue me have you been to um i think it's the hubble telescope or something there's one in uh near my hometown there's like a astral observatory that place would be really cool to see Ooh. and just explore because they've got like a massive like one of those huge like opening seat like the ceiling opens and it's insane it's That's cool so cool okay are you ready for a brand new segment for the show uh-oh <laughs> that's the appropriate response it's the ign guessing game mm. so as i in, have as in the internet gaming or yes <laughs> the okay. internet gaming no uh, i forget what i forget what ign actually stands for but <laughs> the instant gratification nostril <laughs> nostril yes um so i have in front of me the review of a game but i'm not going to give you the score and i'm only going to read <laughs> I'm going to leave out the pertinent information as to what this game is about and which ca what characters are in it. Okay. So I'm just going to read segments from this. <sighs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> like, if, if if this is something I'm going to know. No, 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 no. Or is not this at all. random? This, okay. is, this is... You'll see. So, this is the beginning of the review. Mm -hmm. Blank is, in a word, terrible. Unfortunately, reviews are supposed to be more than a word long, which means that I'm forced to string together several hundred more of them in an attempt to describe to you, our faithful reader, just how bad it really is. Now, unless you've been living under a rock or were swallowed by a whale in the last couple of years, blank, is the most popular movie from 2001 that told the computer-animated story of a blank 
living in a blank land. His ultimate goal in life was nothing more than to be left alone. Toss in the twists and turns of a meddling blank, uh, blank, 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 uh, and a message about true love, and you've got yourself one dandy of a picture. That said, it's quite unfortunate that the game never lives up to the standards set by the movie. <laughs> in fact, anyone who loves the blank franchise should simply watch the film again rather than participate in this poorly constructed party escapade. <laughs> Okay, so the, the, it, the review goes on to talk about the technical aspects of the game, which is boring. Mm -hmm. I was just going to go straight to the verdict. Do not pass go and head directly to jail. Blank is bad, boring, and frightfully trite. When is a company other than Nintendo finally going to put out a decent party game? When, when will all this big-headed, sloppy-built madness finally end? If you love Blank, or if you've ever heard of him, spare yourself the trauma and divert your ever-living essence in the opposite direction of this terrible abomination. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to guess the score? <laughs> The score, oh man! I mean, it's got. How does IGN even rate things again? I think uh, it's, it's it's like one it's out of zero 10, to right? ten, but there zero are decimal 10. places, so you get bonus points if you can guess the decimal. They give it like a two point one or something. Oh, not bad. Two point nine. Oh, okay. So I underestimated there. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> I feel like I know what this is because I, and granted, like a lot of bad reviews sound the same, but I feel like I've heard this before. <laughs> It is the Super Shrek party I was, game. I was literally about to say, it's the Shrek party <laughs> game, which I have played. Wait, what? I, I'm pretty sure I've actually played this. Um, as, as I, I, did, I had to think about it for a moment because I was like, okay, 2001 film. And it's about a love story of a guy who wants to be left alone. I'm like, that is Shrek. <laughs> How did that you? is definitely Shrek. <laughs> the fact that you put that together is actually impressive. Well, because anyone who grows up in the 2000s knows and loves Shrek, of course. <laughs> How could you not? Did you hear the <laughs> Owl City? I talked about this with Jonathan too last no? last episode. Did you hear the Owl City uh, All Star remix that came out last Wait, month? I saw I saw that. I haven't listened to it yet, but I know it's, it's a thing. It's actually fire. Really? <laughs> and I was telling Jonathan that the fact that that happened in my lifetime just makes me so freaking happy. Oh my goodness! I need to. Okay, I'm adding that to my list for right now. I just love the fact that that was how Owl City returned to Spotify after years. <laughs> That's just so phenomenal. I love that. Mm -hmm. Gotta love it. I've definitely played a Shrek party game. And it is about as terrible as they make it sound. <laughs> <laughs> it basically looks like a, a crappy Wii party. Or like... Yes, because uh, 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 this is when a lot of like Mario Party clones started to come right. out. Right. And it's it just... It looks terrible. It just looks... I look... The, the, yeah, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. But that was the end of this segment, the IGN guessing game. I did it. Hooray, you done sort did of. it. Even though you told me the title first, but... Well, you, you knew what it was before I said it, which I think... I did. I was, I, I was I, like... Oh. I don't think anyone's ever going to top that. So, well, so, so my, my guess was that you were going to pull up the, like, the... the it's like 6.8 out of 10 too much water review. <laughs> For uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, the Pokemon games. <laughs> Too much water. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Okay, what I'll pull this? this up and you can you can go onto your. Yes, uh... yes, yes. Pull it up on the terminal. Mm hmm. The absent terminal. Yes, the absent the absent terminal. Okay. Uh, you were you saying something or? I was trying. I'm trying to remember what I was saying. <laughs> So, long story short, IGN, um, so basically, uh, so Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, the games that we played back before we joined the company. Right, right. And we had a lot more free time on our hands. Yes. Um, they remade those games in 2014, I think, around then. Um, and so they had Pokemon Omega Ruby, Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. No, <laughs> Omega Ruby, no. You just said that Pokemon! That is not good. Omega Ruby! I did. Um... <laughs> That's that's it's a, it, that's actually a ROM hack um, that we will not be discussing on this on this Still show. Still not as good as Pokemon Vietnamese Crystal though. <laughs> that one has a drug bag. It does. It has yeah. So uh, anyway, so um, the remakes came out and then IGN reviewed them. Uh, basically, uh, I think they gave it, they gave it a seven point eight. It says good. Um, 
and it says basically like uh, let's see what it says here basically they gave it a 7.8 out of 10 for having too much water because the the <laughs> The region has a lot. It's like a tropical region with a lot of water routes and things. Too so too much water. Too much. Too much water. That's such a good review. <laughs> so what I was thinking of, I just remembered. So when I was a DM mm -hmm. for my group, one of the items that I added in, I saw on someone else's D and D show. It was an ability to summon a character from IGN that has it has to have like a three or less on IGN and it's like your permanent thrall. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the person who uses the totem gets to pick. And I remember my brother used the IGN totem and summoned like a weird disco Titan. It was like mm -hmm. a, it was like a really tall guy with an Afro that just shot lasers out of his eyes. Oh, so good. Good old IGN. Mm -hmm. Imagine games network. That's what it stands for. Oh really? I pulled that up from the uh, the absent terminal. I still like instant gratification nostril better, but whatever. Oh yeah, I want my nostrils to give me instant gratification. I mean instant. I better. Oh, instant nostril gratification. Freaking uh, petrichor. That's what gets me, man. Mmm. The smell that, of the earth that after is, rain is one of that, the best smells. Put that put that in my nostrils and instant my gratification. gratification is instant <laughs> no cool down no instant cool. use instant use <laughs> oh man uh, you, know, you know what i want to play that i because i whenever i'm like whenever i go off for like my my three hour bathroom breaks i live stream on twitch <laughs> um and i want to i want i think i want to do uh plants versus zombies i need to see if that oh, still works because a, a while ago apple phased out um 32-bit applications or 16-bit or something so like there are a lot of games that just don't run anymore and so i might have to run it through my virtual machine but that'd be so much fun yeah yes i i am absolutely i absolutely agree with that i it's that is the dream is that one day some somebody over at ea who like grew up playing pop cap games and loving pop cap games is I gonna like PopCap is gonna like take over the department not all of mm -hmm. ea but they're just gonna be like let me make a new plants vs zombies yes. game and well EA's aren't they be... aren't they making pvc3 are they i feel like i think that's been in the works for a while yes no let me, way let me look if that's for true that's awesome three. i think it's definitely in the works but again ever ever since ea has taken yeah that's taken over things have been very different <laughs> yeah wait a minute this is weird because it seems like it's it's been like a thing for a while like it's had a soft launch but it's not available to everybody yeah it still says the developer is pop cap but because obviously ea is the publisher wait a second tower defense I, game... you know i have a, i have a friend who works for a different pr department the pop cap revival department <laughs> he might be able to he he might he might be able to uh to get us access to it if we want is a tower defense game released released by popcap games this game is a sequel to plants vs zombies 2 and the third installment in the mainline franchise was released on android devices for pre-alpha testing on tuesday july 16th 2019 I'm for a limited well. amount of users in the united states and canada what Pre-alpha ended on February 10th, 2020, with soft launch on February 25th, 2020, in select countries, namely the Philippines, Romania, and Indonesia. Why? Of course. <laughs> Why those places and not here? Didn't you know that Indonesia is a hotspot for <laughs> mobile apps? PVC fans? <laughs> <laughs> Just mobile apps in general? Yes. Can we talk about the state of mobile apps, by the way? Uh... It's, it's rough out here, man honestly like yes it wouldn't be i can't maybe i'm just remembering this with rose colored glasses but i feel like apps were just better when we were kids like they were I, I mean they were they were worse but also better because obviously there's the adpocalypse and there's you know pay to win and um mm -hmm. freaking uh loot well like but it used to be like you had a you had a free version of an app 
and then you had a version that was paid. It was 99 cents. Right. Or maybe a few bucks. But right. then that was it. That was it. And, like, it removes ads or it just makes it, like, unlocks all the game or something. And, like, there was no, like, pay every month to have access to these things or, you know. Um, it, it's very bizarre. I was actually talking this uh, during one of my, my bathroom streams. <laughs> of course. Um, so the Sonic Origins came out a few days ago. And it's basically like a collection of a bunch of the 2D Sonic games. And they, they're they basically like console ports of... Uh, enhanced console ports of the original games. And those same versions were on mobile phones. And for a while, they were basically like... I think they were like 9 donated cents, so you buy it, you get it. Now they're free to play, but you have to pay to remove ads. So like for people who bought the games a while ago, now they got updated, and so now you're still... Like, you don't have access to them, basically. Like, you're going to have to pay again to remove ads because now they're free to play. It's very weird. So, I think companies are just a lot hungrier. So, I just went on to the official, like, EA website. There's a splash page for Plants vs. Zombies 3. Mm -hmm. And apparently, so this is what it says. It's from Bruce uh, McLean, who's the executive producer of PopCap. Uh, yeah. hello, zombie zappers. We have had an amazing journey with you so far and hope to have gotten many hours of enjoyment out of this soft launch of Plants vs. Zombies 3. We've gotten a lot mm -hmm. of great feedback from all of you during this test, and now it's time to pull the game back to incorporate your thoughts and reimagine a few things. The current game will no longer be available after November 18th, 2020. We look forward to sharing our next PVZ experience in the near future and hope you will continue to enjoy PVZ 2. On behalf of the team, thank you. We're working to deliver players more of what PopCap does best. Crazy, irreverent, fun for all. Bruce McLean. So, it was released, I guess, but for a very short window just for data collection. Mm -hmm. And then they so took it like back thinking, down. They're trying to rework things. Which makes me think that there were a lot of problems. I mean, who knows? I enjoyed playing the second game. I actually did a, too. It, it like, had a lot of its issues, but right, it was it still. Was, it's that very line fun. where he says, I hope you continue to enjoy PVC 2, like in the meantime. That's mm -hmm. the line that makes me think they're going to, like, so if I was them and I released Plants vs. Zombies 3 and it was kind of a stinker, there was some problems, pull the game back because it's like a page one rewrite. It's that bad. Or it's just mm -hmm. not what the fans like. So you pull it back, you pull it away, and you say, okay, what the heck are we going to do to tide people over till we can actually release the game? Uh, let's just add a bunch of stuff to PVZ2. Let's just mm -hmm. create new content there to sort of yeah, tie people played over. It, I haven't played it in so long. But... Me neither. I, I, I beat it again, I think, in uh, 2021, but mm -hmm. I have not returned for a while. So I'm wondering if that's what happened. But I didn't know There's that they so were making plants. a third game. I am glad, so though. Plants. There are so many options, my dude. So many options. So And that um, was my favorite. Like, granted a lot of them are like yet to pay for or unlock with the gems. Yeah. But there are just so much there's so much content in it, which was really fun. Yeah. And admittedly, it was a little rough on release. It wasn't yes. my favorite. It was and, it's, and it was so hard. It was freaking difficult, man. Like even Big just, Wave Beach. Yes. Tore me to bits. Big Wave that was Beach so difficult. is one of the most aggravating, specifically the guys who throw the squids. That mm -hmm. just, oh, there's nothing quite like building no. your perfect defense and then just having it nullified by the elimination but... of one plant. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just so sad when that happens. Indeed. Speaking of failed computer products, uh, I did, I pulled up a wiki, uh, a couple hours ago because i was trying to do some research on something highly specific but i mm -hmm. want to just read you a list of characters and i want to i want you to try and identify where they're from you're listing characters from so from what i'm exactly if you you're going to try and figure out what these characters are from out of like computer think computer genre not necessarily okay. video game though interesting okay okay so here here's <laughs> here's the list the dot a shape-shifting smiley-faced red ball hoverbot mm. a robot the genius a caricature of albert einstein office logo a jigsaw puzzle mother nature a globe 
Scribble. An origami-esque cat. Power Pup. A superhero dog. Will. Hmm. A caricature of William Shakespeare. Hmm. So I have to guess what these are from? If you can remember what they're from, I will give you one last one that will put it all in place. Are these all from different things? Nope. The last thing that I will say that will confirm what it is. Hmm. Calippi. Oh, well, I know Calippi. Right. But... All of those <clears throat> are office assistants, Microsoft yes. office assistants, right? Because uh, okay. those I yeah. started to remember some of them because I fair I rarely ever changed it off of Clippy. I forgot how many there were, but it gets right? crazier. There's a DLC. I, I, I <laughs> there is a deal. There's a your, your Microsoft your Microsoft Office DLC. Uh, no, sir. They could make a Smash Brothers with nothing but <laughs> Office assistants. There's Hold an on. additional. There's a list of additional downloadable assistants. Who I've never heard of before in my life. Okay, I'm looking this up now. Right, so if you look here on this page, just labeled, uh, like if you, I looked up Clippy, and this page mm -hmm. opened up on Wikipedia. It's just The page is just titled, as you can see, Office Assistant up at the top. And if you scroll yep. down, you'll see a list of the assistants. Further down, there's oh, the, the additional five. downloadable Jeez. assistants. <laughs> and mm, the list. The installation CD. The list of additional downloadable assistants is freaking bonkers. Bosgrove, a butler. Courtney, a flying car driver. Earl, a surfboarding alien. Genie. You. A genie. <laughs> There's Ka Max. Yes, yes, there is. I am an additional downloadable as Microsoft Office assistant. Kairu, the dolphin, I, otherwise known as Chacha. I always knew one of my friends was Microsoft Office DLC. <laughs> Lynx. Which there's no description. Merlin, no. a wizard. Which I feel like that one eventually just became part of the regular one, if mm -hmm. I remember. Petey, a green parrot, which is ultimately reused in the first iteration of the notorious Bonsai Buddy software. I know Bonsai Buddy. Robbie, a robot. Rover, a golden retriever, also features as Windows XP Explorer's search companion. I remember mm -hmm. him. The Monkey mm -hmm. King, available for East Asian editions. So, oh, uh, Rover, Rover sucks. <laughs> there are so many Microsoft assistants. That's incredible. And I'm I'm trying to figure out like legally who owns them because they're mm -hmm. they've gone the way of the dodo. Like we don't see them anymore. If if they could eventually pass into like, oh, what the frick is it called when like Winnie the Pooh suddenly like a uh, contract elapsed with Disney public domain? At what point mm -hmm. do these characters become public domain? I like the office logo. Uh, no, you're not going to be able to get away with that one. But right. like, can you imagine a fighting game with these characters in it? That'd be amazing. That's so freaking funny. And I guess it's because Office 97 is the reason mm -hmm. is because there was a lot of characters who were sort of before my time, before I was using computers. Right. Well, and I, 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 like, I like how they like this was a lot more. This was m much more necessitated back then because so many people in the early 2000s were still new to computers and so having these characters would basically help assist with getting to familiarize with these things right because computers like personal computers weren't used up to that point so like we always had computers at our house but like it was never something that anyone needed to use it was like my parents would occasionally get on them to put, to send emails just for like a not as a novelty <laughs> and then, and, or to print things. My, and then like, I always play, play games on them. My grandparents had a, I think my grandparents had a personal computer before my family did, or at least before I used ours. Cause they would, I think my Mine grandma would use it for solitaire. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's about it. Freaking mini clip. Did you play games on mini clip at all? I did. I oh did my gosh. I completely forgot about mini clip. Right? Is that, does that website still even work? Because ha half the a stuff of, had to have been flash, well, right? Yeah, so most of those sites are still there. Um oh but my gosh, you have it's to either here. you have to use <laughs> like plugins or Flashpoint to actually play the games. Oh my gosh, it's still here. It's amazing. Wow. Nitrum is still around. There was one action game that I like. You have to. There can't be a lot of 
fresh entries in the mini. There are play. some that still play, but how is super hot on here? I'm what is going on? Too. Okay, so I remember Saloon Brawl, where you're the cowboy who's in a bar fight. I remember that one. Mm. Some of these were really fun, but Black ultimately, swords. like, ultimately, you couldn't really get anywhere with a lot of them. Like, no. you're just gonna close out of the page and lose your progress. Mm-hmm. And heaven forbid your internet go out while you're trying to play through one of these. <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially oh a game goodness. that actually has like uh like you're trying to accomplish something, like a long form game, just does right. not work at all. Fancy pants. That was actually uh, re released on Steam a while ago. Isn't that the stick figure game? Yeah, he's like this this little stick figure dude with orange pants and you yeah. like do flips, you have like a pen that's like your sword and you draw a thing. It's super cool. Oh my gosh, mini clip man. So that's good. That's crazy. No, so one of these office assistants um, eventually became this basically uh, this like spyware slash adware virus called uh, Bonsai Buddy. And it was basically one of those like downloadable assistants that sits on your desktop and it right. can talk and it emails, but it was basically used to like go under and download things under your computer. Uh, it's, a, it's a really cool story, actually. Um, but luckily, our our computers, our absent terminals, are <laughs> absent terminals, are so I, absent that they cannot even grasp <laughs> spyware. I feel like I remember seeing something about Bonsai Buddy, like someone had uploaded like a, a YouTube essay about it. But mm -hmm. and I need to watch it now. But I just thought I, I'll, I'll send you the one I've seen. Good. I all I knew about Bonsai Buddy is that he just sort of looked like a knockoff uh, Diddy Kong yes that's pretty is, much it he is interesting what i love about um a few things so like windows xp the amazing operating system mm -hmm. um it is still being used by the u.s military wait what they are still using xp because it is so solid Secure? um well so it, it stopped support officially in like 2014 or something, but they're, the government is still paying Microsoft a ton of money to basically still update, give it security updates for them. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I would, I'm, I'm assuming it's because of like maybe certain programs that just work on XP, but it has stood the test of time. And there are still like my friend, actually her school system when she was a kid just updated from XP to something uh, new. No way. And I'm like, and it, granted, it's a smaller school, but like, like her class, was, her class was like twenty or something. Um, but it's like, <laughs> wow! I loved, I loved XP so much. Dude, you remember three D pinball? Mm hmm. That's what I would play for hours. Those sounds are so delightful. They're like candy for the ears. Are the like the weird burbly sounds from from three mm -hmm. D pinball? I can't describe it. But I freaking love those sounds. It's it's that like ethereal nostalgia space. Yeah, there's something to it. It's like I'll, I'll always want to go back and play pinball, and I can every now and then. But thanks to virtual machines, and I think you could even play it online. <laughs> I mean, you got to like someone had to figure that out. Like mm -hmm. people love this. Definitely. So I've been thinking, do you, I'm trying to remember, did you ever play Dot? Uh, I remember you trying to get everyone to play it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I never did, but I know what you're talking about. Okay, so yeah, Defender of Texel. This kind of goes back to what we were talking about with Not apps. to be confused with Texas. Right, Defender of Texas. That's just if you live in Texas, that's, they give you a plaque <laughs> and a diploma. You're officially it's your, na it's your natural class that you're born into. <laughs> you're born into that. Um, you have to move states to change classes. Yeah. You're, no, you can move. You can move to Wisconsin, and you're still a defender of Texas. <laughs> if anything goes down, if they decide to secede finally, then you'll have to go back down there. Indeed. Um, but Defender of Texel was really cool. It was this pixelated team building game, and there were so many different characters, and they were all this beautiful pixel art. And you had mm -hmm. a team of nine, and the way the turn order worked is that you swiped your finger across a row uh like left to right right to left diagonally and once you had selected three that was basically the three different waves of attack that would happen and mm -hmm. that was the turn order and it was such a fun game and such a cool mechanic 
And eventually it went off of the App Store because their whole system was basically founded upon a store where people could trade characters. Once your player numbers drop, then nobody's using your store. If no one uses your store to trade, then your economy collapses. And if your economy collapses, no one can play the game anymore because you can't get the characters you want anymore. So mm -hmm. it, the whole thing sort of imploded on itself. It was big for a while. I think most people would still recognize the logo, but I looked up their company and I don't remember what country of origin they are in, but they are mm -hmm. not an American company. And mm. what was really interesting is that I found a couple things online of where people are trying to like rebuild the game from code mm -hmm. because they loved the game and then it just vanished. So people uh, are trying okay. to like reconstruct it, I guess. That's cool. It's the whole thing is very, very strange. There's like a whole like message message board about it. Mm hmm. Of people who remember the game, but you can't actually play it anymore because the game is just gone. Hmm. It's super strange and super weird. But I was thinking about, you know, if and when I ever get around to finally making a game, because that's probably going to be like my big project once I graduate, is mm -hmm. I probably am going to do something similar just with my characters because I have so many. Because That'd that, be a really good idea. The, the play system was super fun and not super complex. And I think, I don't know, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. There's just something about a bunch of disparate characters together mm -hmm. doing something together that just, like, I love it. And I can't explain what it is. Even if, like, a franchise is terrible. When I see, mm -hmm. like... But what is it? Marvel and Capcom, like Marvel versus Capcom or whatever, the fighting games. That's yeah. so freaking weird. But for some reason, things like Smash Brothers, things like that, th just where you get all these characters together and they're like fighting or they're teaming up or like a weird, like the Mr. Game and Watch standing next to freaking uh, uh, Cloud from Final right. Fantasy that's so VII. like so <laughs> wild to me. Because they're, they're from so separate, like, genres and the way they look is different. But integrating mm -hmm. characters together that normally wouldn't. There's just something about that I just love. It is really cool. And I, I think the the way it works with... I, I think it would work with your characters, too, just because you've got a very distinct style. Like, the way they're stylized to all fit side by side works really well. Mm. Because they put a lot of care into making sure that the designs are consistent and even like they're still true to the characters themselves, but they're still like fit for Smash Brothers. Um, right. And then there are characters like, like Game & Watch, who is literally a 2D yeah. <laughs> silhouette of a character. Yeah. Like he's just so smooth and the way they make him actually 2D works perfectly. Um, it, it's really cool. Who do you mean? Who do you mean in Smash? Hmm? Mm, actually, I do like Game & Watch. He's kind of like my warm-up sort of random character. Um, <laughs> he's, he's kind of all over the place. Um, I don't like to... Like, a lot of my characters that I like to play aren't necessarily super high tier, but I just like to play with them, like, because they're fun. Um, and I, I just go in back and... I go in fact back and forth between a lot of different characters, because I feel like if I always play as the same character, I just tend to get a little bored. Um, right. But I like to play as, like, some of the Links. Like, I like Young Link. Um... I like Ness and Lucas a lot. I like... Yeah, there are a lot of different characters. Hero is one of my favorites. Um, and it depends on the, the mashup, too. Or the, the matchup. Or mashup, I guess. But <laughs> Last summer, I played a lot of Smash Brothers with Zack. And mm -hmm. eventually, he was playing as, like, the villager. Like, just over and over and over again. And it was yeah. killing me on the inside. And so I would just hit the random button every time because I was like, I want to get exposed to as many of the different characters as possible. So mm -hmm. so I can enjoy I can enjoy playing any character, even if they're trash. I can still enjoy it. And I got pretty good with a couple characters. Uh, there's one in specific whose name is escaping me from Castlevania. Um, mm -hmm. What's his name? Oh, uh, Richter or Simon. Uh, the Belmonts. The right. I can't remember which one I played as. The was one he with wearing, the blonde was hair. He, he, okay, so that's Simon. Simon. Uh, Richter, Richter has the... He wears the blue and has right, the Right, right, right. 
I love playing as Simon. That He's a fun character. It's got some fun ranged attacks with the uh, mm -hmm. the flame bottle and then the whip and the um the cross and the hatchet he's, he's got really good projectiles but he's also pretty fast like you can move across the map pretty quickly with him mm -hmm. his recovery and, and is not the range the, best, the range with his whip is insane yeah yeah he was really fun we both made uh me fighter characters <laughs> oh I, I love doing that i need to send you a picture i'll have to find mm -hmm. a picture of the character i made i made a character named bartolomeo uh who's just i tried to make him look like da vinci like an old man okay. artist from like <laughs> forever ago <laughs> and whenever we'd play as our characters he named his character roberto and it's just a guy with a bear hat and like <laughs> genie pants and uh like nice. he's dressed like toad with a bear hat on and <laughs> roberto That's and amazing. bartolomeo and whenever i'd play as bartolomeo i'd have to like break into his voice which is just ah bartolomeo Oh, and just like be as obnoxious as possible uh flag nice. smash last summer was a lot of fun mm -hmm. it's always i i usually go to it whenever i have people over or like whenever there's a new character that comes out but they're officially done and there's like i think 88 different characters it's insane yeah i was talking with luke about this the other day it's kind of silly how they're releasing all these maps for mario kart 8 deluxe when it's right like, I, I was not expecting them to be adding more carts to a 10 year old game <laughs> almost <laughs> almost yeah, 10 that's, year olds. wow yeah wow that's crazy so sora is officially the 82nd character i don't know if that uh includes like minor variants between characters but i think number wise unique fighter slots he's the 82nd i thought it would be cool if at some point if they ever make another mario kart game to do essentially what sakurai it is sakurai who did with smash brothers mm -hmm. i i want them to do kind of the same thing with mario kart where they add all of the characters that have been in all of the games and all of the carts and all of the maps Ooh, that would be really cool like everything every single map fully mm -hmm. updated from every game not pick and choosing every map that'd be insane because i feel like that I think given modern standards, that's something that's easily attainable. Yeah, not just attainable, but also I feel like one of the biggest gripes, if I can even call it that, with uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is that you just got bored so fast. Because mm -hmm. you play through and, all the like, maps. and then Well, you just... and what doesn't help, I think, with Deluxe specifically is that like almost all the content is unlocked at the start. There's nothing to get. Yeah. Like, you just yeah. have to play um unless you want to unlock like you, you can unlock gold mario and like the golden cart pieces but i i think that's almost it unfortunately i think and I, be... I think if you play like in mario kart tour which is not great <laughs> yeah i oh my there, god there are so many characters and it's like i'd love to see this in a main game you know <laughs> yeah and or maybe like you could add in a double dash mode or something like that would be really fun. Or just have having like a, a game, a, but then have a like mode a where you where you have you can have two characters, which affects the items you get and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and what else I think would be really cool is having a mode where you can race through through different courses backwards. <laughs> oh. Well, so it, instead of like you just go the opposite direction. Of course, they'd have to modify the tracks a lot for that, but I think it's possible. I see what you and mean. And it would just add add some more variety to it. Instead of left is now right. You're saying the you. You, you're crossing you're going like, the not, reverse not mirror, direction not mirror mode you're going the opposite direction that would be trippy so instead of like waluigi pinball where you go down the table you're going up the table and you have to oh. watch out for all the all the pinballs and dude i think that'd be really fun that would be really fun that would be so good Take that's something that mario kart uh tour does actually they have like reverse versions of stages um and they add in like ramps to make it work it's it's pretty cool I was just going to say, for the most part, it's probably just adding in a lot of ramps going the opposite way. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be too hard, necessarily. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, you, you never know with, with good old Nintendo. You never know what those wily foxes are up to. Absolutely. I can't wait for the, I can't wait for the Bonsai Buddy Mario Kart DLC. Uh, I can't wait until you're added as DLC to a modern copy of Microsoft Word. That explains so much. <laughs> <laughs> a, like a an ancient microsoft assistant why is that perfect for my personality am i should i be upset at the oh fact that that almost perfectly reflects 
my personality. Is there anything you'd like to share? Anything you found recently or anything that's been on your mind or anything that you've been playing recently? It's, or, or it's not my fault. I, I just discorded him into the freezer. I just brought him there. I did not do it. He just needed a break. Oh, 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 okay. So you're using this time to confess to that now. Yes, I just, I, he just wanted to chill for a little bit. And so I, I, I let him sit on the cake. <laughs> the cake will be fine. Okay. I just want to make sure that he's well, okay as well. I'm not freaking Neil. Neil Neil's... can I do Neil things. Yeah, he's up in, a, he's in accounting. I don't really care. Neil's one of those guys, you know. Looks on him. I don't know how to count or read. <laughs> so take that, Neil. So ha! I'm illiterate. <laughs> Weird flex, but okay. I flex everything I can in the in the PR department. That's right. The personal record department. Personal. <laughs> so I uh, I went to our rec center. That's in house obviously, because everything's in here. Yes. And I learned my lesson from last time, and I didn't run three miles. I only ran two. Nice. And I took a break in between each mile. But I had just gotten new tennis shoes, like, the week before. Uh... And I haven't completely broken them in yet. So you, so you, you feel a little bit the tightness? Y yes. And it was, it was funny. It was when I visited the chiropractor, they were, like, basically one leg is a little bit longer than the other because of your spine. Like it's not mm. natural. Like one of your legs is yes. not in reality longer than the other. But ever since they've mentioned that to me, I feel like after I ran, I was like, why my legs don't. Did you ever have this when you, when you ran where like one, your legs, the things that were sore or were hurting were different on both legs. So like on one leg, it's like the ankle and maybe oh, a hip joint and then rarely the other, ever like, it's the knee rarely ever are both of my legs feeling the same things that's so strange to me and i guess on a microscopic level it makes sense but mm -hmm. it's so weird where it's like only one of my hips is kind of sore and one of my knees and one of my ankles it's not everything it's just strange i was walking the next day i was like it was that chiropractor telling the truth or is one of my legs actually longer than the other yeah, it's 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 one of those things where it just takes a while, like, or it's just like, because both of my feet land differently, um, so just naturally how I run. Yeah. Sometimes one of my parts of my leg is just like feels different than the other. I also did not use one of the core crunching machines properly the first couple times I used it, and it took uh -oh. me until the last time I went in there to realize that I could adjust the seat up to fit my height uh... for where the bending point is. So it's the, it's the one where you put your elbows on the pads and then you grip the handles and then you crunch forward. Mm. You flex your core and you like pull the weights forward and the seat you're on is not connected to the back part. And so you can sort of collapse the thing behind you and pull your core in. I didn't realize gotcha. that you had to set the seat up higher because <laughs> your bending point. So the, before it was set super low. So I'm like... Mm -hmm. straining my neck is where my like the, my back should be and i'm like pulling down on it and it's so much harder and it was not mm -hmm. working the things it was supposed to <laughs> and so i found that out like an idiot last time i went in there i looked under the seat and i That's saw the funny. adjustment and i was just like well that would explain why it was so difficult last time and why i didn't feel like it was actually exercising my core at all it was just my back right nice I have those moments now when I do go to that gym where mm -hmm. I look, I like inspect, I have to like check over the machine top to bottom and try and figure out all of its little quirks. And like, I probably look there, like a crazy a person <laughs> where I just walk up to a machine and then I'm just like scanning it like a, a Terminator trying to find all of the, the adjustments and trying to figure out what it's for. Mm-hmm. Because people yeah, who are there, used to it are just, to it. It's, yeah, it's second nature. But for me, I'm like, this is the first time I've ever seen this machine in my life. Right. At our gym, I don't even think they have it anymore. But there's like a, um, we used to have this neck machine. So it's like a, it's, it's so hard to describe. It's kind of like a frame and there's like a pad for your head and you sort of sit in it and then you like move your neck like back or in any direction to strengthen your neck. And I'm like, it's such a niche thing. I think I've only seen one person use it. 
and I've been going for like three years at least. It's like, <laughs> and I think it's, I don't even think it's there anymore, but <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, yes, I want to get neck swole. Do you guys do neck day? <laughs> neck day. Y'all oh skipping neck day? See, okay, so here's, I think that there's a, a Rubicon that a person crosses in fitness where at mm -hmm. some point you pass from it looking really good to looking just scary. Like you, you go from looking cool mm -hmm. and fit to looking like some sort of an undersea creature, like an, a crab or a lobster where mm -hmm. like people or, or, or people who are like heavy roided up too, where it's like not even natural. And you're just right. like the human body should not be shaped that way. Yeah, like, it, it's, it's it's interesting. I, I have a lot of respect for people who can who do like bodybuilding and all that, but it's like it's insane seeing how huge some people get. Yeah, they, like, it's like it's unimaginable. You're like, how is and, that and, possible? And you know why you know why people tan too when they how like bodybuilders are usually tan. Is is that just so you can sort of see more it's, of the contours? Yeah, it's usually greased it, up it, under it, the usually light. Usually shows out. Usually shows up. Uh, or shows off your muscles better. Well, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, if you're going through all that work to bodybuild, you might as well make sure that people yes. can freaking <laughs> see it. If it's I got crazy. up there, it would be just uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost. You wouldn't be able to see anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> that translucent man just walked up, and we can't really see what's going on, but I think he's flexing? We're not sure. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, is it really? Yeah, uh, I'm I need, gonna. I need to. I need to figure out how to get out. <laughs> I'm. I'm gonna go get that cake out from underneath that. Uh, what's his name? I just. Uh, I don't. I don't actually know. <laughs> Does he have a name tag on? We'll just call him Buddy. All right. Well, I'm gonna move Buddy off the cake, and I'm. I'm gonna eat it because you know what? Screw Neil from accounting. Yeah. I. I don't really Neil. care. I'm just mm -hmm. gonna have some of that good old cake, whichever parts have not been touched. I will. I'm gonna avail myself to that cake because i, I feel think... i feel worse for buddy than you the cake you know he was just trying his best <laughs> okay so at some point in time we're gonna have to discuss how he perished in that race but we don't we don't need to get we don't need to we don't need to I, I, I don't think he i think he's just taking a break i think oh fine. you think this is a breather <laughs> yeah oh, okay yeah. this is his recovery tent is he crawled inside it's the fine. fridge like the joker it's fine it's fine yeah. it's it's yeah. fine it's, it's fine, fine. Well, Avery, thank you so much for joining me on this episode and uh, of, of the podcast, the podcast, the podcast, the podcast. Mm. episode negative 472. Yeah. Well, we haven't Point got five. there yet. One day. One Se day. 7.8. Too much. Too much water. <laughs> oh, gosh. It would have been perfect if this wasn't episode. So if this had been episode uh, three. I could well, have now, made it episode 2.9 from the show rating. Now I, have to, now I have to start over. Oh, dang it. Well, Avery, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the podcast. I'm going to try and find my way. Thank you for having me. I'm going to try and find my way out of this absent department store. If you find the exit, please, please let me know. I am about as absent as this department store. <laughs> and I mean, I'm, I'm doing, I mean, I'm just doing my thing in the PR department. So yeah, you keep, you keep doing that. You keep promoting our company in only the way you know how. I think they're going to strap me to the plane again. <laughs> Tell me when that happens, because I want to watch. Sure. <laughs>